Howdy folks and welcome to yet another WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and security aficionado Corey Nockreiner and this is the episode for the week starting February 4th, 2013. There's a lot of news to cover so let's dive right in. Let's start by getting software updates out of the way. First of all, next week is Microsoft's regular patch day. If you're a Microsoft administrator, be prepared to patch on Tuesday. According to their advanced notification, they plan on releasing a bunch of bulletins, 12 to be specific. If you'd like more details, check out WatchGuard Security Center's blog post on the advanced notification. On top of that, there was an emergency Flash Player update this week from Adobe. If you use Flash Player, you want to go update immediately because this update update fixes two uh, critical vulnerabilities which attackers are actually exploiting in the wild. Uh, the attackers are either embedding this malicious flash in uh, booby-trapped websites or booby-trapped uh, Word documents which they might send via email. So again, if you use Flash, go update immediately. Next, let's talk about the latest anonymous breach. During the Super Bowl weekend, Anonymous released details sharing the personally identifiable information of over 4,000 bank executives. Throughout the week, it turned out that Anonymous had actually gained access to a vulnerable website uh, controlled by the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States. There's no clear details on how they gained access to this website other than it was due to some sort of web framework vulnerability in the Federal Reserve Reserve's uh, bank site. Uh, the details that they posted about these bank executives included things like uh, email addresses, uh, cell phone numbers, hashed passwords, addresses, and many other critical details that are probably going to cause some uh, heartache for these bank executives. Uh, apparently Anonymous is doing this as part of their operation uh, to kind of protest Aaron Schwartz's suicide. This was an activist who was being prosecuted uh, under a, a computer misuse law who committed suicide in January. We talk more about this in our Radio Free Security episode, which you can uh, see in the WatchGuard Security Center blog post. So what can you learn about this particular breach? Well, a lot of Anonymous's data stealing breaches are due to web application flaws. Learning number one is you need to make sure your web developers are creating secure websites with secure coding practices. I recommend if you have web developers in your organization organization to check out OWASP.net, a great website. On top of that, you can use security appliances like WatchGuards to help protect against SQL injection and cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, we have various IPS signatures and even our web proxies can help detect some of these attacks. And finally, you might also want to look into web application firewalls. Another interesting story of the week is the evolutionary piece of Android malware. Kaspersky, one of WatchGuard's partners, uh, discovered a new piece of Android malware that was actually found on Google Play's official marketplace. This malware would pose as a, a memory cleaning app and it was called Droid Cleaner. Essentially, this, this malware was capable of infecting your Android phone and once it infected your phone, it could share information with the attacker, record conversations, delete, and, and and uh, monitor your text messages and so on. But what was very interesting or evolutionary about this malware was the fact that it would also put some files in a special folder on the Android device. And if you plugged the Android device in a Windows PC that had autoplay enabled, it would then also infect your Windows PC as well. If you're an Android user, you definitely need to be careful what you download. You might want to use some security software like the, the free lookup tool that's available out there. And finally, be sure to have antivirus products uh, on your network, like the, the gateway antivirus provided by WatchGuard Technologies. This week also brought news of yet another SSL and TLS encryption vulnerability. A couple researchers released details about what they called the Lucky 13 attack. Now this is a very uh, advanced and complex cryptographic attack that has to do with oracle padding, uh, which we've talked about in previous WatchGuard security posts. 
Long story short, if an attacker can get in between the communication of a client and a server that's trying to encrypt stuff with SSL and TLS, there's a chance he might be able to decrypt some of the, the cookies uh, that might be stored on your client when you're interacting with these SSL uh, servers. However, there's a lot of caveats. First of all, it's an extremely complex attack. I don't think people will be leveraging it in the real world. On top of that, the attacker needs to be relatively close to your server in order for some of the timing of his attack to work and he also needs to be able to capture quite a few SSL sessions. So there's a lot of mitigating factors to this cryptographical attack. So what can you do about this? Well obviously a web browser and web server software will probably release updates in the future to fix this particular vulnerability. So make sure to keep your web browsers and your web servers up to date. Let's end on a story of more industrial control system vulnerabilities. A couple researchers released some information about some more Honeywell uh, building control system vulnerabilities. Essentially, these guys found uh, a bunch of flaws in some Niagara software. This is kind of a building control software that controls things like elevators, uh, cameras, lights, uh, heating and ventilation, and many other aspects uh, of, of building maintenance. Uh, we talked about some Niagara vulnerabilities quite a few episodes ago. Well anyways, these researchers found more vulnerabilities against this particular ICS software, which essentially could allow attackers to gain remote access to your building control facilities and potentially do some bad stuff. Now according to the people that make this software, most people keep it behind a firewall, but these researchers did find publicly accessible access to a lot of this software as well. So this story just continues to confirm that attackers are targeting vulnerabilities in embedded systems, industrial control systems, and SCADA systems. So if you manage any type of that equipment at your organization, you should definitely keep an eye out for these issues, keep your software up to date, and also make sure to erect firewalls around this control software and have IPS enabled to protect yourself from these sorts of attacks. So that's all the news I have time for this week. However, it was a super busy week of security and news and just not enough time to cover it all. So I highly recommend you check out the WatchGuard Security Center post associated with this video because I'll have a lot of extras for other stories in the reference section. Of course, you should also visit that blog for uh, weekly security stories to get early news about uh, security alerts and stuff like that. And you should also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept and you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard. WatchGuard Tech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.